As we have discussed in several sections and chapters, model information goes into model space and annotations go in paper space. In order to annotate anything, we need to have the model visible in paper space. That's done through viewports. Think of a viewport as a window to model space or a photograph of that model that you can label. Since each viewport is its own photo, we can do anything we want to to them and they won't affect anything else, not the model nor the other viewports. You use those viewports to arrange the views of your drawing on a sheet. You can move and resize layout viewports and you can use the different layout viewports to have more control over the display of your drawings. For example, you can freeze certain layers in one layout viewport without affecting the others. Let's open up the ice rink example file. Let's create a new layout tab. Right click and then select new layout options here. And it called it layout 2. To change its name, you can right click on the tab and pick the rename option. Let's call it rinks. Press enter. Now we know which one we're working with. When a new tab is made, a default viewport is always created. You can use that one if you'd like, or you can create one from scratch. We're going to use this one, but then we'll make an additional viewport later on, because you can make many different viewports. A viewport is an object just like anything else. It can be moved, copied, deleted, rotated, etc. Let's move this one right now. We're going to move it to the left, and then we're going to resize it so that it only fills up about half of the drawing. So just select it like you would any other object and grip edit. Just stretch it over. Now in this viewport, you'll see this hard line. That's the edge of the paper. Whatever size this drawing is set up to right now, and we'll talk more about that later on in the next few sections when it, we talk about printing. Now the dashed line is the actual printable paper size. All printers are only able to print so far in on a sheet. It needs an edge to hold on to, and it can't print the full size. And so this dashed line is showing you where you can print at. So that's the size that you want to make sure you stay in. Now a good idea is also to make a border or a title block so that you can put it on your drawings. But for this example right here, I just want to show you how to create a viewport and how to manipulate it. Now let's activate the viewport. Do that by double clicking inside it. And now let's set the scale to a 1 to 100. Now how do you do that? Well I can zoom in and out and it's actually changing the scale. I can pan around and this changes the view. Doesn't change the model any, but it changes how I see that model in my viewport. If I double click I do a zoom extents and it fills the line work inside my viewport. Now if I come down to the bottom right, I have two different things that are very important. This is the lock unlock a viewport. Right now the icon looks like an unlocked lock. That means I can pan around or zoom in and out in my viewport. So be careful. If you are working in paper space, you can move around, you can zoom in, that's fine and it won't change the view. But if you activate your viewport by double clicking in it and I start zooming or panning, it will change my view. But if you lock it, now I'm inside the viewport and I can zoom out or zoom in or pan and it won't change my view. It locks the view. So once you get your view set, lock it. Well, let's give this an actual scale. Click here and now you're going to have scales available to you. I'm going to click a 1 to 100. Now I'm locking the viewport. So now I can zoom in, I can zoom out, I can pan around and I won't mess things up. You won't know how many times I've worked in a drawing and other people too and they activate a viewport and they need to zoom in and they've just screwed everything up because someone didn't lock the viewport. Maybe it was them, maybe it was someone else, who knows. But make sure you lock your viewports. Get the scale and the view set up the way you need it and then lock it. If you need to change it later you can always unlock it and move it around accordingly. Now let's create another view because this is a good view of the entire ice rink but we want to zoom in on something. We want to have a little detail, so let's make a new viewport. Go to the Layout tab on the ribbon, and let's go to the Layout Viewports. 
you have a couple of options. If you have a closed polygon or closed polyline, you can select that with object and it will create that shape of an object as a viewport. You can create a polygonal one, which works just as fine, or you can just create a basic rectangular viewport. Let's pick that one. Just pick one point, then pick another. There's your viewport. Let's zoom in towards the entrance of the rink because we want to make a view that shows the entrance. Now let's set the scale at 1 to 30. And you can make any adjustments you want to your viewport by panning around and now lock it in. Now you can also grip edit this as long as you have the scale the way you want it. Turn off my O snaps. And I can reduce what is visible. I can also move this around to wherever I need it to be. Very useful. Now we can add some dimensions. If we go to the annotate tab, I'm going to turn my O snaps back on, and I'm going to start dimensioning my drawing. Nothing crazy here, just some basic overall dimensions so that we can kind of get an idea of how big this entrance is going to be. And now we can compare it to the overall size of the rink. And as you can see, though, even though our views are at different scales, they're still showing us the exact same dimensions. Twenty-one feet. Twenty-one feet. But we're at two different drawing scales. Seventy-seven feet for that overall number. So that's pretty cool. And that's the point. To having multiple viewports. It's also the point to having your model in model space and your annotations or your dimensions in paper space. Because if I were to put dimensions here in model space, they're going to show up when I go in paper space. That line is showing up right there, and it's not set up properly to dimension in model space right now anyway. But the line also shows up here. And if I have multiple tabs in my file, it's going to show up there as well. See, but this dimension here is in paper space. It's not showing up anywhere else. Now, if there is something that you want to show in all viewports, put it in model space. So if you want to label this as rank one, and rink 2, you can put that text in model space and it'll show up everywhere. And then that type of thing is okay to do.